Praise belongs to Allah. We praise him and we ask him for guidance and forgiveness. We seek protection in Allah from the malice of our own souls and the evil of our actions. Whom Allah guides, no one can lead them astray, and whom he makes astray, no one can lead them back to the right path. I bear witness that there is no deity but Allah alone with no partners, and I bear witness that Muhammad is the servant and messenger of Allah. You who believe, be mindful of God, as is his due, and make sure you devote yourselves to him, to your dying moment. Believers, be mindful of God. Speak in a direct fashion and to good purpose, and he will put your deeds right for you and forgive you your sins. Whoever obeys God and his messenger will truly achieve a great triumph. Assalamu alaikum. Dear siblings in humanity and Islam, welcome back to another Jama, another week where we are checking in, taking the pulse of our community and the world around us. And again, I want to first extend my uh, gratitude to Allah, first and foremost, for another opportunity to join you all today um, and for the safety, for the accessibility and the health that we all have to be able to be here together. And, uh, you know, you know the drill. Uh, we are still going through the story of the Prophet Musa, alayhi salam, and, you know, extrapolating, pulling out uh, a few lessons to help us understand, you know, not only his story and his struggle, um, and the struggles of his community, but how we can draw parallels to what is happening today in our world. And so we pick up the story uh, with Pharaoh's defiance, um, uh, his unwavering defiance, and Allah's response by unleashing a series of devastating plagues upon Egypt. And these plagues um, are meticulously detailed in the Quran. And they serve as a powerful display of God's wrath and a warning to Pharaoh and his people. Uh, Pharaoh and the majority of the people of Egypt, you know, they refused to believe the signs, the signs of God. And repeatedly, God sent them his punishments um, and the people appealed. And, you know, they would they would respond and they would appeal to Musa, promising to worship God alone and free the children of Israel. But time and time again, they broke their promises. So finally, with uh, God withdrew his mercy and he gave the order to Musa to lead his people out of Egypt. Now, Pharaoh's spies knew immediately that something momentous was happening. And Pharaoh called a meeting of his most trusted advisors. They decided to gather the entire armed forces to pursue the fleeing slaves. Gathering the army took all night, and Pharaoh's army did not leave the confines of the city until dawn. And Allah tells of this, um, in the Quran. He says, Pharaoh and his people pursued them at sunrise, and as soon as the two sides came within sight of one another, Musa's follower said, we shall definitely be caught. And Musa said, no, my Lord is with me. He will guide me. And we revealed to, Mu to, Mo to Musa, strike the sea with your staff. It parted each side like a mighty mountain, and we brought the others to that place. We saved Musa and all of his companions. Then we drowned the others. That's from Surah Ashura. Um, and so again, Pharaoh's army marched into the desert, and it wasn't long before the children of Israel could look back into the distance and see the dust raised by the approaching army. It was also not long before those in the front ranks of the children of Israel had reached the edge of the Red Sea. And the children of Israel are now trapped. In front of them was the Red Sea, and to their back, the avenging army. And so, you no know, panic and fear began to spread throughout their ranks. And they appealed to Musa. Musa had been walking at the back, you know, of his fleeing people, and he could see the army getting closer and closer. He then made his way through the ranks to the edge of the sea. He walked amongst the people, allaying their fears, and reminding them to keep faith and continue trusting that God will not let them down. Musa stood there at the edge of the Red Sea and looked out toward the horizon. Ibn Kathir narrates that Joshua, an attendant of Musa, known in Arabic as Yusha bin Nun, turned to Musa and said, in front of us is this impassable barrier, the sea, and behind us the enemy. Surely death cannot be avoided. But Musa did not panic. 
he stood silently and waited for God to keep his promise to free the children of Israel. And at that moment, as panic swept over the children of Israel, Allah inspired Musa to strike the sea with his staff. He did as he was commanded. A fierce wind began to blow, the sea began to swirl and spin, and suddenly it parted to reveal a pathway. The bottom of the sea became dry enough for the people to walk across it. And Musa began to direct the people across the dry corridor in the middle of the sea. He waited until the last person had commenced walking across the sea before he turned back to look at the approaching army and then followed his people across the seabed. As they reached the other side, panic and fear began to overwhelm the children of Israel once again. And they again began to beg and plead for Musa to close the corridor. Musa refused. God's plan was already set in motion, and he was confident that the children of Israel would be safe enough, though Pharaoh's army had followed them into the dry seabed corridor. And Allah says in Surah Yunus, We took the children of Israel across the sea. Pharaoh and his troops pursued them in arrogance and aggression. But as he was drowning, he cried, I believe there is no God except the one the children of Israel believe in. I submit to him. Now? when you had always been a rebel and a troublemaker. So today we will save only your corpse, that you may be those who succeed you in sign, that you may be to those who succeed you a sign. A great many people fail to heed our signs. Verses 90 to 92 from Sultan Yunus. Ibn Kathir describes the death of, you, the death of Pharaoh as, quote, the curtain fell on Pharaoh's tyranny and waves threw his corpse up to the western uh, seashore. The Egyptians saw him and knew that the God whom they worshipped and obeyed was a mere man who could not keep death away from his own neck. When Pharaoh had power, wealth, good health, and strength, he refused to acknowledge God. But when he saw death approaching, he cried out to God with fear and horror. If humankind remembers God in times of ease, God will remember even the lowliest of human beings in times of distress. The Israelites witness firsthand the consequences of Pharaoh's defiance and the ultimate triumph of God's will. This miraculous escape serves as a, as a powerful reminder of their deliverance and a source of unwavering faith for generations to come. However, their journey towards the promised land is far from over. And this is where we will pause the story for today. Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. In the name of Allah and exaltations be to Allah, the blessings and peace be upon the Messenger of Allah. Peace and blessings be upon him. So when we sit and read this story, you know, we can imagine what the scene on the ground must have looked like. And one can't help but see a very similar similar imagery in what we, you know, are seeing in Gaza. We are approaching a full year of a live stream genocide. And it's as though we are watching a reenactment of the persecution of the children of Israel by Pharaoh, and especially this moment at the sea. Both these oppressed people, children of Israel, the people of Gaza, are trapped between an impassable sea and the impending army of unimaginable might. Both of these peoples have been pushed to a point that they are trapped and doomed with nowhere to go but either to drown or be killed. The question is, will the people of Gaza be given a path to safety like the children of Israel were? Who will be commanded to strike the ground and open a way to the promised land while their oppressors get swallowed into the waters? And what we have all witnessed in Gaza is nothing short of traumatic. Going back a year ago, you know, many of us knew that the Israeli response was going to be bad. We knew it because we've seen it before. If we pay attention to history, we knew they were going to be unrelenting. But we also believe that if we educated ourselves and others enough, if we protested enough, if we contacted our politicians enough, if we donated enough, if we prayed to Allah for respite through, you know, enough if we prayed enough for respite from Allah, this badness would subside. 
And instead, we are now approaching a year later and we're still in this place and it is beyond frightening. And now this madness is spreading to Lebanon. And it's, it's like we are all existing, walking in this dystopian world where our screaming and our sanity are being sucked into a black hole. And it's very difficult not to let the cycle of frustration and anger, despair and hopelessness lead us to resignation and a loss of faith. But for many of us, whether you're in Gaza, Lebanon, or you're right here as a witness, or you're somewhere in between, all of us are at a crossroads. Can we continue pushing on, fighting for liberation, or have we reached our limits? Are we ready to surrender? I came across an essay titled, quote, The Difference Between Resignation and Liberation is Hope. And it so powerfully reminds us of two moments in the story of, of Musa, where the hand of God is not hidden only in the forces of nature, but is also hidden in the hope nestled deeply in the hearts of those who believed him. It is from his majesty, Allah's majesty and Allah's glory, that Allah turns the hand of his believers into the hand of God. The first moment takes place at the very beginning of the story when Musa's mother holds her child against her chest and is engulfed by fear like Yunus salam, is engulfed by the roaring waters of a sea. And in that moment, she has a choice to make, to resign herself to the fate of her child's death or to act in complete desperation to try and save him. What would the world have told her when she fed her child, then placed him in a basket, then placed him in the river? Would they have called her delusional? Would they have chided her for trying to avoid a fate clearly written? Would they have called her unrealistic, unpragmatic, wildly clinging on to hope she should have long since buried? Yet the mother of Musa knows what others have forgotten, that as long as there is, as long as there is God, there is hope. I'm going to repeat that. The mother of Musa knows what all others in her community have forgotten, that as long as there is God, there is hope. And just like his mother before him, Musa stood face to face with utter desperation. Before him lay the vastness of an untraversable sea, and behind him stood the chariots and spears of an unfeeling horde, and between the two of them stood in the exhausted, terrified, hopeless children of Israel. We are caught, they said. Never, he replied, my Lord is with me, he will guide me. And indeed, Allah did guide him. But to the strangest, most pointless actions possible, strike the sea, he was told. Strike the boundless, outstretched, impassable sea, a wall of water with a glorified stick. How strange he must have seemed to his people, to his companions, to the army that stood behind him, that this so-called prophet, standing with the world's greatest army, hell-bent on his annihilation to his back with nothing but a stick to his name, who was thrown into the river as a child, betrayed by those who raised him, abused and oppressed when he returned to them, that he of all people would still have hope in his heart. But hope is not something that can be taken. Wealth can be taken. Health can be taken. Freedom can be taken. Even life itself can be taken. But hope, that must be willingly surrendered by the hand of despair. And Musa had known loss, suffering, and pain, but he had yet to know despair. And so he held on to hope in hopelessness. And so he struck the sea and the sea split. And this is what we must remind ourselves in every moment of frustration, in every moment of anger, and in every moment of despair. So long as there is God, there is hope. And so long as there is hope, there is liberation. I want to close out with one more reminder from the Quran. An exchange between Musa and Allah that is mentioned again in Surah Yunus. This is verses 88 and 89. And Musa said, O Lord, you have given Pharaoh and his chiefs splendor and wealth, and in this present life, here they are, Lord, leading others astray from your path. Lord, 
obliterate their wealth and harden their hearts so they do not believe until they see the agonizing torment. And Allah said, your prayers are answered. So stay on the right course and do not follow the path of those who do not know. Now, Sheikh uh, Khalid Abu Fadl, he explains that in this verse, Musa is saying, you know, God, you've given Pharaoh, you've given Pharaoh all of this power and all of this wealth. But what does he do with the money and the power, right? He spreads corruption and, and injustice. Pharaoh and his people are as far away from hawk, from truth and reality as one can be. At that point, Musa prays to Allah for the destruction of Pharaoh. Allah responds saying that your prayer has been answered, so stand firm and hold steadfast and do not go astray. And the sheikh, he reminds us that Prophet Nuh also made a similar prayer, and Allah replied that his prayer had been answered. But how much time had passed between the prayer and the effects of the flood? It wasn't immediate. Some say 40 years, some say 80, some even say 150 years. And how about Musa? Allah says, your prayer has been accepted, but between the acceptance of Musa's prayer and the drowning of Pharaoh's forces, 40 years have passed. And this is a reminder for us. We could be doing dua, and Allah could in fact answer our dua, but Allah answers it on Allah's time, not on our time. We cannot expect our du'as to be answered on our time. We have to trust that justice will come on Allah's time, and Allah's time doesn't operate like our time. We experience time on a moving, linear path. We are tested with patience, with endurance, with steadfastness. And these are attributes that are unique to us. They do not apply to Allah. And we cannot allow them, those attributes, to obscure our understanding and our relationship with God. And we cannot allow them to shake our faith because this is how we lose hope. And so long as there is God, there is hope. Oh Allah, please accept our good deeds and our good intentions. Forgive us of our shortcomings and missteps and allow us to share many more moments together. Allah, grant us good things in this world and the good things in the next life and save us from the punishment of the fire. Allah, aid us in accepting the tests and tribulations of this life and give us the strength to overcome any challenges we may, we may face. Allah, we ask, I ask that we, you rid us of our fear, our anxiety, our despair, and our sorrow and replace in us a sense of serenity and tranquility and most of all hope. O Allah, we ask that you place peace and solace in the hearts of those suffering any injustices. O Allah, obliterate the, faith, the wealth and harden the hearts of the oppressors so they do not believe until they see the agonizing torment. O Allah, we hope for your mercy. Do not leave us to ourselves, even for the blinking of an eye. Correct each of our affairs for us. There is none worthy of worship but you. If I have said anything of truth that is from Allah alone and my gratitude goes to Allah, and if I have said anything that was not of truth, then that is from my own ego, and I ask for forgiveness from this transgression. I want to thank you all um, for being here um, and uh, uh, just a few announcements. This Sunday, we have two events at Muslim Space. So one um, in the morning at 11 a.m. Central Time, we have our monthly uh, Surah Halakha. We'll be discussing Surah Insan. And then um, you can get the Zoom links on the website. And then for those of you in the Austin area, we, area, we are holding a um, community vigil to um, mark the one year of witnessing this genocide. Um, so again, details are on the website. You can RSVP there, um, but I hope you're all doing well. This is a recording, um, so there won't be a, a, an opportunity to uh, give salam, but I hope you're all doing well, and inshallah, we will see you soon. Keep Gaza and Lebanon and Sudan and the Congo and those suffering from the devastating hurricanes here in the states, in your du'as, in your prayers, make uh, we ask Allah to make their 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 suffering um, put at ease. Zakhlas, salam alaikum, Allah wa barakatuh.